Hi, I'm Chris Heiser from Internet2 and University of Pennsylvania, and this is Grouper Training, the Developers and Architects track of Web Services Part 3. We'll introduce the topic, we'll talk about authentication, we'll look at some of the samples that are provided for web service operations. Um, we'll show you the documentation of the structs or Java beans uh, that go in and out of the operations. Then we'll look at translating the struct or Java into SOAP XML. REST like JSON, REST like XML, REST like XHTML, and REST like HTTP params. Um, basically, the web service is part of Grouper. Um, the web services server uses the Grouper API to talk to the um, Grouper registry or database. And then clients that are going to be written either by the developers or architects, or um, the Grouper client is a, is a uh, um, client that you could use command line or, or with Java are going to communicate to the web services over SOAP or the REST-like protocol. So for authentication, when you authenticate to the Grouper server, you need to um, tell the Grouper web service server who you are and prove that. And the authentication is pluggable, so your institution um, does it in a certain way that I'm not exactly sure how it is. So it depends on your institution config. If they have some documentation about it, um, they should share it with you. Generally, however, um, people deploy using HTTP basic auth, and then in the back end, that is either the um, web server um, password file, Apache, or Tomcat, or it could go to Kerberos, or LDAP, or whatever. So basically, if your institution does basic auth, when you send a request, whether it's SOAP or REST, you're going to have an authorization header um, in HTTP, and you're going to put the um, standard HTTP. It's not the password, but it's, um, I think, Base64 encoded or something like that, um, where it's not actually encrypted. Um, it's just uh, encoded for the header so that there aren't any special characters. Um, so generally, if you have a client like um, Java's HTTP client or um, whatever else, you're going to have an opportunity to put um, credentials in there, and it will do the authorization step for you. Hopefully, you don't have to roll your own HTTP and do that yourself, although it's um, documented and easy to do if you have to do that. So each grouper of service operation has documented samples. And there are samples for all the different formats, SOAP, REST-like, um, XML, XHTML, etc. And basically, they're automated and regenerated for each release. So um, of the samples that exist, um, as things change a little bit with each release of uh, Grouper, if, if it does, a uh, new sample will be generated. And these samples are stored in subversion and versioned and web accessible. So whatever version group or web service server your institution is running or that you're connecting with, you can look up the samples for that version. And in version 2.1 of group or web services, there are 300 samples there um, of the various uh, operations and formats and stuff. So the samples have the input to the operation, the output, the Java source code that was used to generate that and the standard out and standard error of uh, whatever's printed out. So if you go to um, Grouper Web Services uh, wiki, and you can get there just by googling Grouper Web Services, and it's the first non-featured ad link, whatever, um, then you can scroll down a little bit and all of these subpages that look like a an operation are operations, or else they're also listed down here. So you could pick one of these operations, for instance, group save, and then there's light and batched, and you can click on samples, and actually all the samples for light and batched are in the same directory. Um, but basically, here is a um, uh, group save with detail JSON, um, group save with detail SOAP, uh, group save light SOAP, group save rest light with HTTP params and XHTML coming back, group save uh, rest light JSON, etc. 
um, if you click on one of these, so here's um, a REST JSON one, then you can see all the different revisions or whatever. And if you click download, then you'll actually see the uh, text file, which is the sample. So this has all the headers and the um, authentication is, uh, is uh, taken out so you can't see it. And then this is going to be formatted and indented, even though it doesn't have to be when you send it to the server. Um, but this is basically what was sent to the server. Then this is the HTTP response of the sample. And you see all the headers with the session ID cleansed. And basically this will be indented for you. You can see the JSON of the response. Um, this is the Java source code of what generated that. And generally, um, I tried not to use a lot of um, libraries and stuff. So um, you can just see exactly what it took. And in this case, Grouper has a way to translate these beans um, to uh, JavaScript or uh, JSON. Um, and so that's the method that does it. However, your um, programming language could, has a JSON library probably you can use. And um, then at the very bottom, you know, some things are uh, printed out, standard out, and you can see um, what was uh, printed out. So the samples versioning, you have to manipulate the URLs a little bit or browse through um, Subversion. But if you're on the web part, um, basically trunk is what is linked from the documentation. So if you go from the uh, uh, operation page, whichever operation it is, and you click on samples, this is going to link to the trunk branch of Subversion. And if you want to see a different branch, which you probably do, um, things don't change that much, so maybe trunk is okay. But let's say you want to make sure you're on the grouper 2.1 branch. You can replace the word trunk with this in the URL, and that will get you over to the 2.1 um, branch. And then, you know, you could see the same operation there. Um, and as you can see, uh, it says version 2.1 um, as opposed to whatever the other one was. And um, if you want to see a particular version, for instance, um, maybe the uh, 2.1 branch is on 2.1.4 at some point in time, but you're on 2.1.1, you want to make sure you get the exact one. Um, you could replace that branches and branch name with uh, tags and now this is going to be the one that's 2.1.1 tagged. Generally the, the releases, the dot releases um, the third number, the operations don't change that much so that's not that big of a deal but um, if you wanted to do that you could and you can um, browse all this stuff just by taking things off the URL um, so here's all the branches uh, that are in um, the grouper subversion. You can pick whichever one you want, and same with the tags. And then um, once you get to the, the tag that you want, for instance, 1.7, you can then navigate down to um, grouper web service uh, doc samples, and you can see all the samples for the various operations. So if we, as we've said in other web service um, training videos, um, it's a RPC remote procedure call um, um, set up for web services and basically a struct or Java bean or object or whatever is passed in and out. So here you have the specific format and then either SOAP or REST-like. Then versioning um, could make things a little bit different. Um, then whether or not it's lighter batched and then there is a java bean that um, consists of strings um, java beans arrays of strings rods arrays of java beans and that goes into the grouper web service logic so it's basically these beans tell you what's available to use in json xml xhtml etc and the 
important part of that, I think, is pretty much the Java doc. You could look at the source code too, but um, the Java doc for those um, structs tell you what's available uh, for the input or output of the operation. And those are stored in Subversion just like the samples and they're versioned in web accessible, etc. So for a SOAP example, let's look at a SOAP sample and then we'll look at the um, Java doc for the input struct and then we will check the WSDL or ordering. So basically, we can pick an operation, let's say um, get members, and we can look at a um, SOAP sample of that. And let's look at one of the inputs, okay? And we can put this in an editor, hopefully an XML editor, um, but it could just be a text editor. And um, then we can look at the, um, so we're, at, we're in get members now. Let's say we want to um, so the input to get members, uh, the non-light one, takes a grouper version, WS lookup, um, field name, include include group detail, which is a boolean, includes subject detail. So let's say we want to add include group detail to our request. Um, basically, oh, well, include, include group detail already there, let's see. Let's say we want to do point in time from and point in time to. Um, so the name of this bean uh, or input field is point in time from and point in time to. So we can add those two fields here, and then we can put a valid uh, value in there. So we'll use this um, format, and we can change that and put some real values in there. So, so we'll go from January 1st to May 1st. And um, with other um, transports, I think the ordering of the XML or JSON or XHTML doesn't matter, um, but with SOAP there is a WSDL and it does matter. So we can pull up the, the WSDL for whatever version we have. So I can Google Grouper WS WSDL. And again, this WSDL is version and branched, so we could put the the correct branch up here if we wanted to. And um, as the WSDL changes in ways that aren't backwards compatible, you have to put the uh, version. So in this case, it's uh, v2.1. And basically, here I'm going to look for a get members. see that point in time from and point in time to are the last elements so it's after um, you know source IDs and params and attribute names and include subject detail and include group detail so I put those in the right place we can look at a rest like JSON sample editing look at a JSON sample look at the Java doc for the input struct and edit the JSON in a similar way, let's just look at the um, just to get members again. And let's just look at 
samples and um, rest JSON. So basically an input for this would look like this JSON string. And um, you can also look at the um, request object documentation, which is a uh, Java doc of the request object instead of a Java doc of the um, grouper service uh, method. But it's the same thing. And this basically um, uh, has the fields as getters. And so get point in time from, get point in time to basically means that those fields are available to be called. So if we take this and we read this correctly, so subject attribute names, um, group lookups, then we could add um, these two fields here as JSON. So put these in quotes and put that there and put that in quotes. Or whatever the JSON is for this. we go. We added a couple fields to the JSON input. For the rest like XML sample editing, we'll look at an XML sample, um, look at the Java doc, well, we've already done that, and then edit the XML. So basically, um, we can look at the samples and we'll just do rest XML download. This is a sample XML. And then we know that point in time from or two are available to be added. Um, so we can copy those two guys and take out the namespace. And that's how you would add a couple fields to a um, XML request. Um, so for an XHTML one, you can do a similar thing. Um, XHTML download. XHTML is a little bit more complicated and actually it looks like um, even if the data wasn't there uh, there's a placeholder for it which might make it a little bit easier so um, if you were to use XHTML which a lot of people don't um, I think you would just do it like this and then copy and paste the uh, values for that Finally, if you are using REST like HTTP params for the input, you specify what you want the output to be. Um, and I just corrected the slide, edit the HTTP params. Um, so uh, this is pretty much only for the light um, operations. Um, so let's pick the HTTP XML light one. So um, if you're posting these HTTP params, <coughs> and you'll have to your URL encode these, um, we could also put ampersand.
point in time from equals, and this can have a underscore. I don't know if that other stuff needs to be URL encoded. Uh, ampersand point in time to equals. This can have a underscore. Click on the quiz link in the video description to reinforce your knowledge of this topic. And um, check out the wiki or the info sheets or the demo server or the training link uh, to get more information. Thank you.